thought it was quite a cold morning, but warm now. Welcome back. It's another lovely day in paradise. Clear winter's day, and we are. We've got a couple of jobs to do today. We're doing a transport cert for a bull, which I'm just about to do that now. Basically, we have to assess an animal if there's any question about whether he's fit to tra travel. The farmer has to get a vet to come in and say what they think. So I'll have a look at him now. He's got quite an unusual injury uh, or problem going on. Also dehorning three sort of yearlings, but we haven't got a head bale. Um, so we're having to be a bit creative. We've actually just given them some xylazine. Sorry, I'm looking for a pen. Just given them some xylazine. So that's that sedative and we're gonna knock them down because I can't see any other way of doing it really safely. I've got Taryn with me here. I promise she's not my chaperone. She doesn't come on every call with me, but it was a quiet morning. And I thought if we needed someone to sit on a calf, then it's good to have another person apart from just me and Lee, the farmer here. Cool, so we'll give that a bit of time to work, Lee. Yeah, I just thought to stand here and let them they stay up there. It's a bit cleaner up there. Oh, I see, I see. That, is that that bull there? Yeah, yes, yep. What I might do while, while we're waiting for that to kick in, yep. I'll, uh, I'll grab my pad. Okay. What's the ball set? Uh, transport set. Or... Have a look at him. When... I was going to say, a couple of people have lots of them in the, in the past, but... So, the question is, Willie, is he going to deteriorate in transport and I don't think so what I might do is just I'll talk to the vet I'll get a good photo and we just want to make sure that dangly bit doesn't get caught or snagged anyway that would be the the only concern so I'll talk to them and see if there's any conditions we can put on this morning he, he probably had it sucked at another probably two inches yeah it's warmed up <laughs> like I say there's normally things you can do like like with herd mates only or perhaps on his own so he's not you know if he heaven forbid someone stood on it or something like that, you know, it'd be pretty. Right, yeah. um, I'll, I'll talk to them, I'm pretty happy. It's Kaz here from Vets South Tapanui, how are you? Hi, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Now, unfortunately, this boar's injuries leave him unsuitable as a future breeder, so there's only one career path left for him. That involves a trip to the abattoir or the works, as they call it here in New Zealand. It's important that his travel doesn't compromise his welfare. And there are vets who check this at the other end. They work for MPI, which is the equivalent of DEFRA if you're in the UK, or perhaps USDA if you're in the States. So, for example, if a farmer sent an animal that was significantly lame, they would get pulled up for it, they'd be fined, and possibly even worse. Hence my visit to write a travel certificate. I'm happy this ball isn't a welfare concern today, but myself and my colleagues have found it good practice to talk it over with one of the vets stationed at the works beforehand. That keeps us on the same page and avoids any nasty surprises if there's a difference of professional opinion. Great, thanks for your help, Christy. No, you're Bye then, bye bye. Cool, you've probably heard all that anyway, but I'll just send that through to her. Uh, no, she's pretty, she says they have a lot of balls of penile injuries. Um, it's actually, to be honest, it's actually looking way better now than yeah. what it ever has to be honest. Um, I, was actually, I actually thought he snapped it, to be honest. They, if, if you, it's a different type of injury that, and they snap it, it tends to be higher up in the sheet. Oh, um, I, I've, got a, I've actually got a good photo on my phone. But I couldn't tell you what it was called. You date and sign there, please, Lee. You saw that bull there, he's got a, an injury, Lee was just saying, he bought him last year, and he managed about three weeks work before he injured himself, mm. <laughs> which does happen. I was just saying bulls are like combine harvesters and you get three weeks work out of them and they break down. Normally just when you need them. All good? Perfect. I'll give that to you now before I forget. I'll run the driveway with it. Uh, and then we'll come and do these boys. Um, but yeah, so that's the idea is, I'm gonna have to the vet there uh, at the works or the abattoir and she's happy with him. Uh, along with, you know, he's going to travel with a few conditions, so he's going to go by himself, by a separate compartment, um, just to avoid any injury to that penis. Uh, and then while we've been doing that, 
those calves have gone to sleep quite nicely. So I'm just gonna chuck some wet weathers on. I'm gonna hop in there and whip these horns off. Right. Oh, it'll be, it'll be quick enough. So you can see here, these guys, they're, they're not totally asleep. They're just really dope. You see his, got his tongue hanging out there, this young man. Um, but we just need to give them their local and uh, then we'll get those horns off. It just seems to go neatly. With you. Because his horns are so big, I'm gonna put yep. it up there as well. Yeah, yeah. We'll leave them sort of, make sure they're sort of um, less upright before we go. Uh, I'm just going to do these others now if you keep the whole time. Yeah. So how many, are these the only car, sort of horned calves you would have had, Lee? Because if you're using Angus bull, hopefully most of your calves will be pulled. Oh, no, all those poles, well, the bulls do not poles, so... Um, oh, I'm with you. So your, 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 your beefy calves will be yeah. all pulled. Yeah. Cheers, we just run out the muzzle around. Sedations work really well because I've just committed a cardinal sin by saying the sedations worked really well before the end of the job. That is an absolute schoolboy error and you'll see what I mean in just a little while. He's a nice, quiet animal, so that xylazine never works quite as well where they're always, when they're already a bit sort of raggy, which is Northumbrian for angry. So we'll just give that a quick second to work. Yeah, you can see these boys, not, not asleep, just got his wee tongue hanging out there. And uh, yeah, there's no headstock up there, up here, silly. So it's just safer, I think, to, uh, to knock them down like this. He is asleep. You hear him, hear him snoring. If we wrap that around his hog, so like, uh, just like you do for a down cow, this is what, this is really good, Taryn, actually, if you, yeah. you're trying to, if you've got, yeah, down cow, milk fever or something, it's just really good, restrains them quite nicely, and it gives you good access to the jugular vein if you, if you needed it. Maybe you hold on to that, please, Lee. So yeah, you see that? So if, if he was down cow, which he's not, yeah. lovely jugular, whoa, access there. And it was all going so well. What was I saying about schoolboy errors? That's it. Hold on. Nice. Relax. Just lean into him. Lean into him like that. Yep. And Lee maybe sit on his hind quarters. See how he go. <laughs> we're just talking about rodeos, funnily enough. Might as well catch your rodeo if it's gonna go. <laughs> if you watched our hernia vlog, you might remember me saying that sedation and anesthesia is trickier to get right in cattle than a lot of other species. And I certainly seem to be proving that right today. This is not ideal. He's sleepy, but the noise of us working away is enough to wake him up. He's also managed to take us away from the nice dry bit of the pen we had him in before, which was much steadier underfoot. In hindsight, I could have given him more sedative, and I really start to think that when I see his ginger mate get up and take a look at us. Part of what makes dosing difficult is the individual. Just like with alcohol, some can stand a lot while others can't. These cattle are fairly even weights, got pretty much the same dose, and one is standing up, one is unsettled, and one is flat out asleep. He's the real cheap date. I could have also left the certificate until afterwards, as the 15 minutes it took me to do that may have just overshot our optimum window of sedation. But that is vetting in the field. In the meantime, the chemical and human right. restraint we have get will just up, have to get up. us there. And I'm happy that all of them are sedated enough that they don't pose any real danger. It just makes the job more awkward for us. To add insult to injury, all this cowboy work is exposing my lack of fitness. Apologies for the hyperventilation. Right, great. Now, hold on to that, Lee. <sighs> oh. 
Hmm. We just have to deal with him separately. He's just, I've taken my jumper off. Bloody hell. We might do that Hereford uh, Lee is, he's pretty dope still. We could walk him up the crush, pop a whole ton of time to the side of the, not the crush, the race. Time to decide the race and then he's just a bit more, a bit safer for everyone. Easy, that's what it should be like. I think this is going to pick up on my heavy breathing. Make it seem as if I'm wildly out of shape. That's right, mate. Yeah, I think with him, it's going to be better if we just walk him up the race nice and slowly. Get that bar in behind him. Could probably knock him over, but he might not stay down. Come on, then. Come on, young man. See, it horns are good. Can be good. Uh, go on. Oh, he's a cheeky bugger. Two seconds. What's up? Oh, saw me coming with the halter. Come on, young man. What is my phone? <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, please. Okay. Oh, it's quite a cold morning, but warm now. Okay. Now, the tricky bit is going to be trying to get a hold on him now, yeah. but I'll do that. <sighs> so this is very really easy. Uh, where am I gone here? <laughs> uh, no, there it is. That's there. Oh, right. Around those ears. Oh. Right yeah, right yeah. back of the ears. And now I'll just come in. There we go. Good idea, right? So. It's not the tidiest dehorn I've ever done. Try not to saw through my halter. <laughs> I have done that before. <sighs> but it's warm, isn't it? That's right. That's it. There we go. That's more like it. Now we're in business. <sighs> yeah. I didn't even let Taryn have a go. How rude. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit trying. Oh, I know. How not to do it. So this is a real Kiwi thing. 
Well, it's certainly not a British thing, that's all I can say. But you notice we haven't burned any of these off to stop the bleeding. And actually, it's really unlikely an animal this big would lose enough blood yep. to even be affected. But instead of burning them, kiwis sort of seem to <laughs> stick cocktail sticks in. Right. They'll stay in long enough to stem the bleeding. And they'll just sort of fall out of their own accord. Uh, now, if I did that in the UK, <laughs> I don't know what anyone would think. <laughs> Although it was an old-fashioned thing, it's an old-fashioned thing in the UK to use cobwebs, oh, wow. barns, and wipe them over. Or but I normally just burn them off. But less of the done thing here. The thing the other day, it be, I think it's an American thing. It was on TikTok. Oh yeah. Um, a bit of down kill. Have you ever seen that? Like, oh, with the, blo the glove over her face. Yeah. Yeah, I did see that. I think, it's, I, I think it is asphyxiation. Right. Now, if you're sat, if you say, I'm not going to get up, and then someone put a glove over your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I mean, it's really impressive, and in a, in a really tight, sticky situation, it might be the way to go, but if she ran off with the glove over her face, I don't know. So, so he's still got a bit of blood. That's okay. They've got a lot of blood cows, cattle, as I'm always saying. As for this chap, I just think he's got that small, small spur to there. So I'll just... Easy. <laughs> they're not, they're not very far in. Right. It's really just a few mils in. There we go, good as gold. But yeah, like you were saying, Lee, most of these are from the dairy herd. These beefies, are they? And most of those would be disbudding at an early age, weren't they? Yeah. Vast majority of these would just slip the net. It's funny because I think that, that one over there with the little horns, I think it would have been very hard to pick up as a calf. So they're only that size at this age. Right, that's us done. Way too hot. It's only, it can only be about five degrees, but with all those layers on, making it look hard work. It's important to make these things look hard work so the farmer knows he's getting a good job done. Lee didn't hear that. Anyway. Can't make it look too easy. I hope you enjoyed that. See you for the next one.